Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Mark Spiegler, Global Director of Art Basel. First of all, I'd like to thank you for joining us today in Salon for the discussion that's focused on the future of Buenos Aires' cultural landscape. I'm honored to introduce to you today's speakers. Um, in the middle, we have the mayor of Buenos Aires, Horacio Rodriguez Larreta. To his left, we have Diego Radevoy, Director General of Creative Industries at Buenos Aires. Then we have Orly ben Zakard and her daughter, Mora Bacal, the second and third generation of the gallery, Ruth ben Zakard. And then Alec Oxenford to Laurizio's right, uh, a very prominent local entrepreneur and, and, and uh, internet specialist and a collector, of course. Um, and in a sense, what you have on this stage is a combination of the forces which will bring together the future of Buenos Aires. Um, as, probably, as many of you probably know, uh, last March we announced that we were going to do Art Basel Cities. Um, and in September, much sooner than we expected, um, we were able to announce that Buenos Aires, the capital of Argentina, was to become the first partner city for this new project, which has been led by Patrick Foray, our Director of Business Initiatives, who's been working relentlessly on this project for the last six months. It seems like every time I call Patrick, I have to wonder which continent he's on, whether he's in the home office in Hong Kong or in Latin America. Patrick, could you stand up and take your duly rewarded <laughs> applause? Before we begin, and I must stress this because it's something I continue to be asked, we will not do a fourth Art Basel Fair in Buenos Aires. Instead, we will work long term over a period of several years with the city of Buenos Aires to develop cultural programming of international significance. What that is and what that will be remains to be seen. It's something which is being very actively developed and discussed between the people on stage here and Patrick's team. Um, it will be tailor-made. It will be specific to the city and its cultural landscape. And I'm, I'm sure that you will go into this and give us a hint of where it might go, although without promising any details in your speech. We're very, very excited to be partnering with the city of Buenos Aires. Um, there were a lot of contenders for who would be the first city in our policy cities. And as soon as Patrick told me that Buenos Aires seemed like a real possibility, I said, Patrick, make this a high priority. Make this happen if you can. Because having, having knowing Buenos Aires, knowing its history, the depth of its cultural involvement, the sophistication of its populace, I thought it would be a tremendous first launching point and testing ground for what this project could be worldwide. Starting in late 2017, the city's program will be tailored to benefit the city of Buenos Aires and its existing cultural landscape and its hopes and dreams about its future. We want to spotlight Buenos Aires as an international cultural destination, taking our Basel beyond the fairs to celebrate what Buenos Aires has to offer culturally, bringing the vitality of the Argentine art scene to the international art world's attention. Given its long relationship with Latin America, Art Basel Show in Miami Beach is the perfect place to launch this discussion around Buenos Aires, its position within the global art world, and what effect Art Basel cities will have there and throughout this country. And on that note, I hand it over to Andras Santo, who has been working closely on the project and who will be walking our, our, uh, our uh, panelists through their paces. Thank you very much. Watch the skies. Great things will happen. <laughs> Okay, can you all hear me? Good. Um, well, welcome everyone. It's terrific to see a full house, which is exactly what we expected and hoped for. Uh, thanks, Mark and Patrick, for launching this initiative, which is in a way uh, a new leap forward for Art Basel. So it's really quite wonderful to start an initiative that's about really turning the page for Art Basel with a city that's also turning the page. It seems very appropriate. A uh, couple of other people to thank. I'll set things up, we'll talk for a while. It will all happen quickly. But I just want to mention a few people. First of all, Mari and Anneli who organized these salons, thank you. Uh, there is an intrepid team, in addition to Patrick, who have been visiting. In fact, two of them are in Buenos Aires right now. Gerda Vanderberg, uh, Isia Manga, Simon Sakal, and Aya Musavi, who have been uh, now familiar to many people here. Uh, there's a terrific and uh, ever larger group of friends of Art Basel cities, many of whom are sitting here in the audience. I'm not going to try and 
name you because then whoever I leave out is going to be very upset. Uh, but uh, museum directors, collectors, uh, influential people in Buenos Aires who welcomed us with open arms. Um, I particularly would like to thank the team and the board members of Arteba, which is of course, for those of you who don't know, a uh, nonprofit foundation in Buenos Aires uh, uh, supporting and advancing the visual arts sector. They also organized the wonderful Arteba and the Arteba Focus Fairs. And they are very much a frontline partner for us in all of this, so thank you. Um, and many, many, many other people who I can't mention today. So for me, it's been a great personal privilege to go to Buenos Aires a couple of times already this year. Um, but I think, like many people in this audience, I'm someone who, uh, who travels a lot, but nonetheless, before these visits, didn't really know Buenos Aires very much. And in the last few months as we've been working on this, every conversation I have, it sort of has a sentence where someone, someone goes, oh, Buenos Aires, I always wanted to go there. <laughs> and, but there was another list of other cities and uh, perhaps they haven't gone yet. Well, when you do go to this city, what you discover is a city with a extremely vibrant cultural life. Um, it's cinemas, it's bookstores, it's theaters. It's extraordinary museums which are putting on fantastic programming and building new wings and sprouting new energy. Uh, it's great galleries which are uh, supporting artists often at great personal uh, difficulty and financial risk. Um, uh, an audience that is insatiably interested in art. I have to say as a guy who lives in New York, I wish we had cultural audiences who felt that culture was as important as, as you feel it in your bones in Argentina. Um, and I think very importantly, you also feel that you're in a city that's turning the corner, a city that is experiencing a, a kind of a moment of opportunity um, after many years in which it was looking more inward than outward. Um, and as you talk to people across the city, during these fabulous lunches and dinners that one has, uh, what you find is people who are deeply committed to arts and culture and really, truly, deeply patriotic. Many of them have come back from the private sector, lucrative jobs to advance this city and help it get to the next stage. So it's only fitting that we have this program at Basel Cities to sort of spotlight and celebrate uh, Buenos Aires starting in 2017. And our conversation here today is sort of the first step in this process of, of sharing this excitement uh, with the world. So um, I hope it will inspire many of you to come and those of you who've been to come back. And we'll talk for a little bit. I'm, I'm going to ask everybody a few questions. We'll chat for a while. Maybe there'll be time for a couple of questions and then there are drinks. So. Um, I'm going to start with you, Horacio, <laughs> the most relaxed mayor I've ever met. Most uh, relaxed? <laughs> Why that? <laughs> um, you've been a fantastic, uh, fantastic uh, collaborator in this process from the first moment. Um, you have taken over the mayorship of Buenos Aires in 2015, July of 2015, so it hasn't been that long. Uh, you have a background in economics. You attended Harvard Business School. You've held many positions in the city government, uh, working uh, partly next to the current president who held your post before you. Um, for those of you who are not au courant about Argentine politics, at the moment, both the city government and the nation are under the shared political leadership. So, Horacio, um, this is a city that has a lot of problems and challenges, and you have a lot of headaches that you have to deal with. Um, it is a time of rapid changes. Culture is only one of many areas you're having to think about. Tell us about your hopes for the cultural industries of Buenos Aires and what government can do in this next phase. Okay, well, first of all, thank you for having us here. You can imagine the horror for us, how proud we are that we, we were chosen as the first city for this new program of Art Basel. We talked about it six months ago for the first time. Yeah. And in, in only six months to be here 
launching the program, it's, it's really like uh, making a dream come true. Uh, one of my main objectives as mayor of Buenos Aires, thinking on the, on the development, development uh, long term of the city, is to promote all what I call the creative or, or talent-based industries. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that there is the, the base for the, for the development of Buenos Aires. I'm talking about the, the technological industry, the, the audiovisual, even cooking, design, and also, for sure, the, the, the art and culture. Mm. Buenos Aires has, for example, is the second largest amount of theaters in the world, before, only before New York. Mm. We have the largest amount of libraries per capita. So there are some mm -hmm. figures that show the, the commitment of, of our city with culture. And I'm also sure that many of the, lo the challenges I have, which are many, uh, in the long term, most of them for sure will be very much helped if we develop culture. Mm -hmm. For example, one of my main objectives is to integrate the whole city, all the shanty towns to, to become mm -hmm. as any other neighborhood. For that, for that purpose, we are promoting a lot to bring culture within the shanty towns. Mm -hmm. And we are doing a very aggressive program of bringing for example, we are bringing now to one of the most populated one, the opera from the Cologne Theater. Mm -hmm. So yeah. in our long term view, I'm sure the culture will help in, 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 in all the view I have for the city. But right. specifically, we are promoting all the cultural industry. As you know, because you have been there already, we are promoting the development of the south of the city, which is the less developed area, with an art district around La Boca, Yes, I was reading about La Boca just yesterday um, uh, in a book. I mean, this is n not an easy neighborhood, but you, oh, you, no. you, you seem to be of the school that believes that like Paris and like Barcelona and many other cities, by integrating art, you can revive this uh, I, I'm this sure that town. through art and bringing culture to that neighborhood, which is, as you say, one of the less developed and, and most problematic areas of the city, I'm sure that through culture and art, we, we will help develop the area, mm -hmm. even economically. Mm -hmm. For example, a couple of weeks ago, we organized with Arteva, the first time that Arteva does, uh, does a, how do you call it, for, for, focus, focus Arteva in La Boca. It was fantastic. And really, we all, because yeah. with Arteva, we, we, all, we all were a bit doubtful about how it impact. Yeah. And it was a great success. So tell me, people, just, and, yes, and also, I, take a second to thank a lot Arteva yeah. Yeah. because we are here and we met you yeah. because of them. So yeah. we are a team working all together on this, on this yeah. project. Yeah. One of the things I like the most uh, when we talked the first time is that you said, and we agreed, it's not an, a government initiative, this. Right. This is the, the whole community, the whole cultural community, all together have to work on bringing at Basel <laughs> to Buenos Aires. And also another thing I liked that you mentioned before, is that it's not one, sh one fair that we're going to organize. It's like a long-term relationship, partnership, you know, to promote all our art potential that we have around the world, to bring people to Buenos Aires. That's why I liked a lot when we talked the first time about this objective of, of building together, all together, a long-term relationship. Well, um, I hope you have many other mayors around the world who share your views, because um, it's not every mayor who understands the importance Thank of culture. You. I want to turn to Diego. I'm going to pull everybody in, and then we'll keep talking. Diego, you've been instrumental to all of this. Um, Diego, it was a, I could probably spend the whole rest of this session describing the many things that you've done. Uh, but you're one of these people who's come back into the public sector after working in and there are a lot of people like this right now who worked in many different areas of business. You've been in real estate, hospitals, ski resorts, but also very importantly, you've been a promoter of tango and Astor Piazzolla um, and uh, many, many other things. Uh, but now you are uh, di director general of the creative industry. So you've been a point person in all of this. So with that sort of hat on, also a collector, by the way, um, you know, thinking from your side as someone who's been a cultural entrepreneur, what do you think it's going to take to get 
Argentina to sort of the next level and what role can our Basel cities play in that? Hi, thank you. Um, one first thing, uh, I want to uh, be clear that the main reason why I'm working with the city, of course, is because I believe in everything, but also because I heard this speech from the mayor before, and I said, someone that has that commitment with culture, need, you need to be with him, because it's not so usual. And honestly, that, that was my first reason to, to step in into this amazing project. Um, I think that the creative industries really are the future of culture in many senses. Basically because if you have an ecosystem that works, art is going to become more solid and you're going to build on, on more stronger basements. The other thing, I, I, I believe that in the history of Buenos Aires, Buenos Aires was the port in which all the, um, all the new ideas, all the new avant-garde philosophies, the new fashion coming from Europe, all the new, um, even the forbidden books uh, came for the first time to Buenos Aires and there they spread to the rest of the country and the countries around us. So I think um, it's, it's part of our, our, our gens, it's part of DNA of, of Buenos Aires to be always trying to find what, what is new, what is coming, how can we become avant-garde so um, I think part of this project is also becoming a lighthouse that Buenos Aires can again irradiate all these uh, new tendencies, new ideas, respecting the identity, like La Boca is a, is a good uh, challenge in, the, in this sense because we are bringing the new, but also we are respecting the, the, the strongest identity that La Boca has. And um, I think we've been working from the creative industries to make Buenos Aires the cultural capital of South America in many, in many ways. We want to become uh, a hub for creativity and talent, for design, for art, for films, for music, for books. There's so many things going on around uh, Buenos Aires and, and we think we have a, the strongest opportunity for this. So this program goes in the same direction that we've, we've been planning with all the other creative industries. And as someone, and, and by the way, one of the issues when you deal with Buenos Aires is this is a city that has a very healthy opinion of itself. You know, this is a... Uh, 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 That's true. Uh, uh, and so <laughs> I, I, I'm glad I got a, a laugh, but, uh, um, but it's true, right? And, Subjectively. And, and so, you know, you sort of throw out an idea and you think, wow, this is going to be great. And they say, oh, well, we've already done that. You know, so the issue is not so much that uh, there's a tremendous richness there. And so what is the biggest, in your view, what is right now the biggest obstacle of getting that sense of richness out into the world? Diego. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not objective talking about Buenos Aires. That is true, <laughs> definitely. Um, I, I, I've been spending a lot of time around the other countries in the world, and, and, and I really, I, I really love my city. So, definitely, I'm, I'm very subjective. Um, I, I think that the feeling in Buenos Aires is that everything is there. We all feel that everything is there. Something is missing. We, we're not sure what is missing, but everything is there. And, and definitely, now there is a window of opportunity, mm -hmm. and, and, and I think everything is coming at the right time. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about some challenges because it's, it's not an easy situation, and I think it's only fitting that we talk about galleries. I mean, behind us is the most important art fair in the world, and in front of us is uh, Orly Benzakar, who is the second in three generations of uh, her family, and the third member of that same family is right there, um, running really the most distinguished avant-garde gallery really in Buenos Aires. You also recently established uh, a new gallery association. So you've spent your whole life promoting artists in, um, in Argentina, some of the most significant uh, ones. Um, the space has been there since 64, and you've been running it since the year 2000, if I'm correct. Um, so as a gallerist and somebody who's come to Art Basel a lot, I mean, you're familiar with the, the scene. Um, what, what are some of the biggest challenges for you um, and for galleries in general in Buenos Aires? And what do you hope to get out of all this? 
Oh, and she's going to speak in Spanish. And thank you all of you for speaking English. But in this case, she's going to speak Yo in voy Spanish. a hablar en español. Y Mora me va a traducir. <laughs> <laughs> Hacemos el team así. <laughs> eh, bueno, eh, eh, tener una galería de arte en Argentina es un desafío. It's a big challenge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> eh, ¿Vas traduciendo? Bueno, y... Eh, lo que tenemos que tener en cuenta es que trabajamos con gente particular. El artista es una persona particular, el comprador, el coleccionista de arte también es una persona particular. Nosotros somos particulares. Um, running an art gallery um, it's always a challenge and let's face it, we are all dealing with um, particular people, the artists, the collectors and we are special as well for being in this In this system. Vivimos en un país que históricamente, tanto política como económicamente, vivimos con altos y bajos. Eh, esto nos hizo una escena muy poco eh, amable para transitar en el mercado del arte. Um, we live in a in, in a country that has been many political and economic ups and downs. And that's a big challenge for us. Um, entonces, cuando nosotros en, encontramos un, una situación más confortable y empezaron a surgir muchas galerías, um, en, decidimos formar una, una cámara de galerías, reunirnos para lograr objetivos comunes. Um, seeing so many galleries. Um, that so many galleries were born in the last um, couple of years, we, we have seen the opportunity to be united and create an association that represents all the galleries of contemporary art. Sí. <laughs> Tenemos una escena artística sin duda muy eh, rica y sofisticada. Tenemos galeristas que son muy lindas personas. De... We have a... Oh. Um, Um, a very generous and, and sophisticated art scene and, and colleagues, galleries that are really nice and great people. Y en hace menos de un año decidimos agruparnos y formar lo que hoy es la Cámara Argentina de Galerías de Arte Contemporáneo, que se llama Meridiano. And um, less than a year ago we created the Meridiano, that's the Chamber of Contemporary, of Argentinian Contemporary Art Galleries. Hoy Meridiano reúne casi la totalidad de las galerías que hay en la Argentina entera. Eh, somos 45 galerías, de las cuales 38 están en Buenos Aires. We managed to associate almost the totality of the galleries in Argentina. We are 45 contemporary art galleries and 35 of those galleries are based in Buenos Aires. Bueno, eh, lo, eh, una de las cosas que nos interesa mucho es el espíritu principal de esta asociación, es eh, el, el carácter colectivo, el ser un grupo representativo de todo un sector. Y creo que este primer paso lo hemos dado muy exitosamente en menos de un año. One of the primary goals of Meridiano is to be representative of, all, of the whole sector and, and, and trying to leave the personal uh, goals of each gallery on, on a side and, and to fight for the whole sector. And I have one question. I know you have a long list of goals that you've set for yourselves for this association, but if, if we can make your dream come true, and one of those challenges could be solved today as a working gallerist. What is the single most important problem you would like to fix? Yo, yo creo que el sueño más importante que tenemos la Cámara como, como sector y como galeristas es poder tener un mercado mucho más consolidado y grande. Que crezca. I think one of the dreams that we have on, from our sector is to have a market that's more consolidated and, and strong. Mm -hmm. 
Perfect, because this allows me to switch to Alec, because he knows about integrated and consolidated markets, because he's a businessman and a very successful one. Um, Alec, um, you really have been absolutely key to this whole situation. You've been a kind of liaison. You're making me blush. <laughs> I'm glad. I know it's not easy. Um, you have a couple of very, very successful uh, uh, companies uh, in the digital space in Latin America. So some of these have become rather large enterprises, and you've done very well. And you are a collector as a result, and you are also uh, one of these people who are not just working on your private enterprises, but are also active publicly, and in particular as the current chair of the Arteba Foundation. Um, but you know, you're someone who's been successful as an entrepreneur and understands the broader landscape. So thinking about the world of the visual arts, and we have others here who are also very successful in the world of business, um, thinking about the world of the visual arts and the art market in Argentina today, uh, what do you see as the biggest challenges and what are the biggest needs to address? Yeah. You know, the, the Chinese have a one single world, a word for challenges and opportunities. You know, it's kind of the yeah. two sides of the same coin. And I think the, the biggest challenge slash opportunity that we, we see today in, in Buenos Aires um, and in Argentina in terms of the art scene is to um, open, it, open it up, meaning turn on the light of what's going on I think, in the art scene in, in the country without impacting it in a way that reduces its identity. I think the most attractive traits of the, the art scene in Buenos Aires is that, that it has a very, very strong identity. Mm -hmm. um, I travel around the world and it's very common that we go to different museums and different collections and very often you see the same paintings with the same artists in the same places in London, New York, Berlin, everywhere. Today we were very lucky to see something extremely different, uh, thanks, thanks to you. But it's very often that it's kind of the same thing over and over. There's a, what I would call a, quote unquote, a bit of a negative globalization mm -hmm. because it standardizes. Yeah. I think that bringing Buenos Aires um, into the global scene can help de-standardize that because it is a scene that has been isolated uh, for many decades, I would say, mostly isolated, and it has developed a very different character. Um, very, it, it's in conversation, it's clearly connected with the world, it is in the world, obviously, mm -hmm. but it's very different at the same time. Mm -hmm. I think, it, and, and only the different can actually enrich something. I mean, mm -hmm. cloning what already exists doesn't add a lot of richness to anything. Right. But bringing something different actually enriches and expands and magnifies and amplifies. And I think in that process, doing that process in an orderly way, mm -hmm. without complexes, without going too fast, um, without um, you know, hurting feelings of anybody on, 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 on any side, is, um, is going to be a, a long and uh, you know, delicate experiment, which, which we, we can all be part of and hopefully all participate in. And just the last sentence I would say is, I think one of the biggest challenges is Argentinians have um, this trait sometimes of being great individuals. You know, like you see Argentinians succeeding in sports, in the arts, in business, but usually as individuals, not that often collectively. Mm -hmm. But this is a team effort. It, it seriously is a private, public, global initiative mm -hmm. and and it requires you know, lots of private people and people in the in the NGO sector and the public sector and government ev everywhere all participating together to make it succeed mm -hmm. the first few steps and you you guys have done a phenomenal job in helping this get started but to a large degree I'm a believer that the success of this great you know Art Basel Cities initiative lies on the <laughs> it doesn't lie on, on you guys. I mean, you guys are phenomenal. Um, you were kickstarters of a great yeah. initiative. But you can't, you can't change a city. You, can't, you, can't, you can only facilitate, maybe help, mm -hmm. uh, share best practices, um, share information. It's up to us. And I think up to us all together. And therefore, 
you know, it's Arteban, it's Meridiano, and it's all the galleries and the artists and the collectors and the government all together. And I think that's the biggest challenge, just making sure that there's no, no, no individual trying to monopolize the initiative or ego problems, all those issues that usually are stupid, because at time, the time is now. Yeah. This is our opportunity. No? Well, exactly. And I, we don't have a lot of time, but I do want to drill down on a one theme uh, in particular, which is this whole idea of the global, a global city. This is sort of what you were talking about. And, you know, I mean, who's, who, well, I don't know how many people here have been to Buenos Aires, but when you go to Buenos Aires and you walk around and you look at the streetscape, you know, what, what is so striking is that you're aware that this is a city that was at the forefront of cities 80 years ago. It was a truly global city. The majority of the population was foreigners, speaking foreign languages. What explained the success of Buenos Aires then, and what could lead to that same success now? Looking at you, Horacio. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I think what, what you mentioned about all of us being immigrants at some point in, in, in our history, that explains most of the success. Because most, most, not to say all, most of the immigrants that arrived in, in Buenos Aires, in Argentina, in Buenos Aires at the beginning of last century, they came with nothing. As, as we say, with, with really nothing. So the entrepreneurship that they have to develop to, to, to grow and to all together make Buenos Aires what it is today, you know, shows, or, or shows the, the energy we have in our DNA mm -hmm. and the, the, the entrepreneurial spirit. Mm -hmm. That's why, and here we have one in, here with me, but that's why of the five unicorns that exist in Latin America, four came from Buenos Aires. Mm -hmm. And there are many, uh, many uh, examples like this that shows the creativity, the, the passion, the entrepreneurial spirit mm -hmm. that we have in, in, in Buenos Aires. And in somehow it's because of our, our cosmopolitan origins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, as you say, you feel in Buenos Aires this globalization all together. Mm -hmm. And the good thing is we live all together very peacefully with no strain at all in a very diverse and, and open society. Mm -hmm. So all that contributes a lot to the potential we have. But as, as Alex said, I also I agree with him that we need to improve in the collective action. Yeah. yeah. Well, when you have that collective action, um, and I'm asking all of you, let's say five years have passed, and there's been five years of, or however many years of Art Basel cities, and you know, hopefully many of the other economic development programs that you are now putting in place have played out. When you look out at the visual art world of Buenos Aires five years from now, how will it be different from today? Yo espero que en cinco años tengamos mejores condiciones fiscales aduaneras, económicas en general, eh, para dinamizar todo el mercado. We hope that in five years we will have better fiscal situations and custom situations and economical situation on, in general um, to have a, a better situation. Diego, how will it be different? Yeah, I think it needs your a job. No, it needs a little bit of everything. His responsibility. <laughs> okay, another one. Please. No pressure. No, it's, I. I it's uh, on the record. No, I, I think that it's it's uh, it's a great opportunity because, as I said before, everything is there. So we just need to start working together, put this passion that we showed tonight in uh, in everything, and 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 also. Um, with the, with the help of programs like people like you, something that said, Alec, the best practices of the world coming to Buenos Aires is also a good opportunity. So um, I promised all the panelists that I'm going to end this with a surprise question. So we're going to have the surprise question. Each of you has to answer it. And you don't have to talk much, just one simple answer. And it's a bit of a hypothetical. So let's just assume 
that a group of uh, private philanthropists have teamed up with the government in Buenos Aires, and they decided to do a huge game-changing public-private partnership in the visual arts. And somehow or other, they have raised $10 million. Easy. They can invest in anything they want, but it has to be long-term, it has to have a public benefit, it has to have a lasting benefit, and it can't be like a lot of little things, it has to be sort of a big bang, right? So if it were up to you, what should it be? And I'm going to start with Alec. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andras. <laughs> You've been a friend until now. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, it's completely personal. Uh, this is my personal thinking, not Artebas or anything. Um, I would build um, a space um, which is devoted exclusively to contemporary art, focused almost 100% on non-well-known uh, artists. So only for the up-and-coming, for the younger, and uh, I would make it, uh, you know, very, it, it, would, it would need to be in a very visible place where there's lots of traffic, I mean, meaning human uh, movement, so that it's easy for people to go there. And um, I, I, I would focus on, yeah, just, just making it, make it, making it a stage to communicate to the broader public the incredible impact for the long term that artists, particularly young artists, can have. Uh, show the connection between arts and the public. You'll be the last. The last? You have to be the last. <laughs> okay, okay. Mayor gets the last word. Orly. Eh, yo creo que si llegan con 10 millones, eh, creo que un millón, un millón y medio podrían gastárselo mientras están en la ciudad comiendo. If, if they arrive with 10 million, 1 million they can spend it eating and drinking on the city. Um, <laughs> yo creo que 8, 8 millones tienen que gastárselos comprando arte contemporáneo en las galerías. <laughs> and the rest <laughs> must be spent buying contemporary art on the galleries. Una parte podrían donar de esas compras a las instituciones and argentinas. Part, and the part should be donated to the institutions. I see Victoria Norton nodding in the front row. Everything. <laughs> Diego. Um, I, I think it, uh, it could be great. I think the, the creative industries are, are a great chance for young, um, young, young people that hasn't uh, had the chance in the past maybe to work or study. So they, they are generations of young people that are, they have a lot of, of needs. And I think that the, with the creative industries, there are a lot of job positions that they can, they can work with. And, and so I think it's, it's a great way through culture to get these uh, young people back into, into uh, positions and jobs in the city. So um, I, I think I, I would create something related to young cultural artistic shops like production services for films. I think there's a, a wide range of opportunity there. Horacio, yours is the last word. Yes, I would, I would give the money to Alec <laughs> to, invest to make, it. To make what, what he said, but, but we'll do a partnership with okay. the city, provide the place, the location. It's in the south. We have a marvelous place called Barraca Peña, which mm -hmm. used to be a, f a, f a factory for, for fishing mm -hmm. in the south. It's uh, five to ten blocks from Proa and Caminito. Mm -hmm. It's an incredible place. So with the money you give Alec, they will develop the place f f uh, that we provide. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm going to end it. But as you see, there's no shortage of ideas and there's no shortage of creativity. And in that spirit, I wish everyone the best and three cheers for Art Basel cities. Thank you very much. Thank you.